in a tweet with over 12,000 likes. Lumpy says, why did the Baldur's Gate 3 devs choose to reveal that they are tracking everyone's save files for analytics purposes by suddenly putting their player base on blast for making generic dude bros out of nowhere? What the heck did we just read? We're gonna need some context. From the Baldur's Gate Steam announcement itself, they talk about, as mentioned, how the player base apparently is making, on average, their characters look like this guy, which apparently has upset them or something, as they say, What the heck, guys? We gave you demonized horns and even tails. We are sorely disappointed. Go crazy. We worked hard on this. We've got a lot more analytics that run in the background. We'll share more insights and data. <laughs> how about not? That's kind of creepy. Oh my god. Hero, hey, you are so wrong. You are factually inaccurate. How can you push this misinformation? This is how you cloud chase on YouTube chat. You go to someone which has more subscribers than you, in this case, half a million subscribers. And then you, you call them out and you act really angry. And you're like, <laughs> but in all due honesty, I was going to talk about this today. And, um, I do see a lot of people being upset about it. It's kind of like a bad wag. It's how we content creators do stuff. Like people on Twitter send us th things and we don't really think about what they mean and we just churn out the content, which is fine. But sometimes it requires corrections, especially because I love Baldur's Gate and I want this game to succeed. And if you have accurate criticisms, go for it. But if the criticisms are not accurate, then please stop. So in this particular situation... Uh, the developers are in early access. Now, I personally don't like early access. However, if you choose to buy the game, you are consenting for the developers to gather data from you. So it's not creepy. Like, this is something that most people who play Baldur's Gate know because it's like big with red letters when you open the game. It's like, do you want the developers to have access to your data? And this is why, allegedly, they did the early access is so that they can gather data from players and improve on the game. Like, for example, if they notice that the game is too hard at certain levels or that some characters are OP, they can add monsters, they can tweak things, they can notice which encounter people like and which encounters people hate, right? Like that, it's literally why it's on early access. So, in this situation, I, I do understand why the developers might be a little bit frustrated, right? Because you have so much customizability and people don't use it and the developer wants to know why. So there's many reasons for it. Uh, first of all, it's min-maxing. I mean, in Dungeons and Dragons, playing a human, especially in the fifth edition, is just so overpowered that there's no reason to play anything else. Like you get an additional feat, if I'm not mistaken. So having a human character is just the way to go. Secondly, most people are going to play male because the audience is male, and it's not about represent oh my represent no it's Due to romancing. I mean, like most people want to romance a female character. Most people are interested in straight romance. And because of that, the overwhelming amount of people are going to create a white male. If this was like Diablo or something, yeah, people would probably create a woman or something sexy with a nice ass to look at while you're playing the game. However, because this is roleplay intensive, people want to pick the male option so that they can romance the ladies. Simple. Now, the media, of course, they freak out about it, which is kind of weird because th this should actually go into their confirmation bias. Uh, if you believe that representation is important, I don't. I think relatability is important. But if you think representation is important and the overwhelming amount of customers are white men, this is what you're going to see. However... This is not the case, right? Like, it's not because, oh, I'm a white guy, so I need to play a white character. No, like, I would definitely like making a big titty thiefling that's red with horns and blue eyes and stuff. Like, I, I would like to play that, but it is not optimal. Like, the race doesn't give you the uh, advantage that a human gets. And on top of that, I do not benefit from the romance options, uh, which is to, to romance the ladies in the game. So this is why, right? Like it's, it's nothing creepy. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, the developers are looking into it. By the way, like the developers, they, they generally want to help the community. Like if no one is using all the other features that are in the game, they need to ask why that is. Maybe they can improve those features, make them more likable to convince people to use it. 
From what I did notice, however, is that the character creation screen is mostly for women. Like, if you go on Twitch and you see how women play video games, like, for example, that Star Wars girl. She spent two fucking hours in the character creation screen for Elder Ring. Okay? Two fucking hours for a video game where you don't even see your character because it's got a helmet on and thick armor and you don't get to see anything. So, women, they get trapped into the character creation screen. They really love it. I, as a man, I couldn't give less of a shit. Like, I just want something that doesn't look dorky, doesn't look like I want to gouge my eyes out, and then it's like, okay, click. It takes, I don't know, maybe like one minute for me to be in the character creation screen, so I don't really care about this nonsense. Right? I don't try to sculpt my characters to make them as close to me as possible. But with that out of the way, I don't mind if the women find enjoyment in, in the character creation stuff. And as you can see, there, there are... Uh, people in the media that are like, oh my god, what the hell, why, why is this happening, you know, and, and it's kind of funny that these are the experts, like, this is their job, to constantly talk about video games, and unlike me, they also have a team of people, like, they, they got editors, they got uh, fact checkers, they got, like, all the other people that are helping them write the news stories, and they can't figure out why is it that the player base creates this type of character, they, they literally just can't figure it out. Not to mention, you know, if the game is in early access, like, most people are going to take their playthrough seriously. Like, they just want to experience a little bit of the game, see what it's about, right? It, it makes complete sense that most people are going to do their actual role-playing and they're, they're going to genuinely invest themselves in the character when the actual game is out so that they can uh, play it properly. Right now, most people are just testing the game. They're testing the mechanics. They, they might be interesting to see where it goes. So, I don't think that people are going to spend a lot of time in the character creator. I would also like to add that unlike other woke games, for example, Outer Worlds, where it's literally impossible to create a beautiful female character, in this game you can. Like, I have seen people create some very beautiful female characters, which shows that the developers do allow for options, which is literally what I want to see from a character creator. The downsides, however, and this is the actual legit criticism that I have about this game, is that the NPCs, especially the female ones, are very cringe. Um, I, compared to Baldur's Gate 2, where there were a lot of interesting romance choices and there were a lot of interesting female characters, I couldn't for the life of me find one that I like in this game, except for the one that you can create. And there's a couple of spoilers there, which I don't want to get into. But it is a little bit disappointing, to say the least. Especially for a game that's a sequel to Baldur's Gate 2, which had very many interesting female characters. And the cope from the fans on Steam seems to be, well, yeah, but this is an adventure where you're thrown in with some strangers and uh, everyone is an asshole by design because you have to force yourself to work together with these people. And I don't know if I buy that. I, I just think it's... Uh, bad storytelling, but that's like a legitimate criticism that you can have to the game rather than, oh my god, they're looking at your save files, and they don't like the fact that people are creating a human character, and they want to improve. Uh, and by the way, my, my point on how they can improve it, uh, the game already has this, and it could have more. Create more events that are dependent on the character you pick. So, for example, if you pick a Dark Elf, I know there are a couple of events specific to only Dark Elf characters, uh, maybe have that for dwarves, have that for, you know, all the other races, so that people are willing to have different playthroughs and explore the game with, with other type of characters besides a human. Let me know what you guys think, though, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.